بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا عبد القاسم المصطفى محمد Let us first start with the concept of Shaheed. According to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in addition to monitoring us and having the angels to monitor us, in every generation he appoints a human being to be a witness about what the people of that generation do. And on the Day of Judgment, he would give report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the people of his age. Those who have been following him and complying with the standards that he exhibits in his life and character would receive his approval. And those who have been ignoring him or rejecting him or fighting against him would receive his approval lack of uh, satisfaction or you can say it's a kind of failure. This is called Shaheed or Shahid, which means witness. It's different from Shaheed in the sense of martyr. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَنَنْزَعَنَّ مِنْ كُلَّ أُمَّةً شَهِيدًا Certainly we are going to raise from every nation a witness. And we are going to bring you as witness for these people. So it means that throughout the history, in every nation, in every generation, there has always been a witness. At the time of the revelation of the Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the witness. And since this witness has to report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what the people have done, so he must know the actions and even the intentions of the people of his time. How can he be a witness when he doesn't know what the people have done? Or he can just see what they do outside, 
physically if he doesn't know what is happening in their heart because there is no the difference between monafiq and mu'min. So that witness is the one who has to know everything, who has to be aware of everything, and then he would be able to give a full report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, this doesn't mean that Allah needs his report. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself knows everything, but there are many different types of reports which are going to be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is to make us more alert. Otherwise Allah doesn't need report. When the angels write down everything, when our organs are going to give report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is so that you become very alert. You know that everything that you do would be registered by so many people and so many things. In any case, this witness who knows everything, according to our Muslim brothers and sisters from other schools of thought, is thought to be always Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam since the advent of Islam. They think when God says, وَجِعْنَا بِكَ عَلَىٰ هَاؤُلَىٰ الشَّهِدَىٰ means these people and all the generations to come would be under your report. So they don't believe that there is anyone who would be witness after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is where we disagree. <coughs> So what I want to clarify tonight is that we can argue from the Qur'an itself that the witness must be a person who lives with the people and cannot be someone who has passed away in this sense. Although we believe that Rasulullah is aware of what people of this age are doing or what the people of, for example, um, another generation are doing, but in this particular sense, witness is the one who is living with the people and among the people. A very useful reference from the Quran to establish this idea is the verse about Prophet Isa Alayhi When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked on the day of judgment, Isa alayhi salam, did you tell people to take me and my mother as your lords? Here there is a also discussion that in Barakats I mentioned. Some people say that uh, our Christian friends never worship Lady Mary. Why the Quran says, they have Trinity, but Mary is not one of the three. It's God, the Father, God, the Son, and Holy Spirit. So there are different answers, different explanations. Some people say in the course of history, there have been people who have been worshiping Mary as well. But another interpretation is that this doesn't say anything about Trinity as a formula which is established. This is something about an implication of believing Jesus is God. If Jesus is God, then mother of God for sure must be God. How can someone be God and the one who has given life to him is not God? So this is a logical implication. It doesn't mean that they consciously and articulately say this. It's the implication. In any case, when Allah asked Jesus, What is the answer? It says, May you be glorified. I have never told them anything other than what you have asked me to tell them. And Allah, of course, knows the answer, but this is to be established so that everyone knows. Then, Prophet Isa has a very important statement. He says, Ibnama kuntu shahidan alayhim ma dumtu fihim. 
فلما توفيتني كنت انت الرقيب علي I was a witness over them as long as I was with them ما دمت فيهم although he didn't die he's still alive but he says I am no longer shaheed I am no longer a witness over them I was only in that position when I was with them. When you received me, فَلَمَّا تَبَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِ You were the only one among us, me and two, that is monitoring them. So it means that my responsibility to be a witness and to report is only limited to that period that I was with them. After that, you know better what they have done. So this verse proves that a witness has to be with the people. So now we understand that in this particular sense, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or any other prophet cannot be witness for the people who are coming after his demise. There must be someone else. So, who is that witness who comes after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The Quran itself gives the answer. أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَيَتْلُوهُ شَاهِدٌ مِنْهُ When they started disputing and debating and rejecting the mission of Rasulullah, Allah says, how can you question someone who has clear and evident signs from his Lord? And he is followed by a witness from himself. من كان على بينة من ربه إز رسول الله. ويتلوه شاهد من. Who is that witness who follows رسول الله? Who is that witness? If you have any candidate, please bring someone. Who knows what people of his age are doing and he is able to report back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about their practice, about their iman, about their nifaq, about their intention, everything. Who is that person? I must. Or answer that there must be a person. And the Quran even says that Shahibun Minhu, this witness is from Rasulullah. He is not a person who is not related to Rasulullah. If you are familiar with the Quran, you realize that according to the Quran, to be from someone has a special meaning. To be from someone means to be 100% obedient to that person. Man. Whoever follows me is from me. You may be son of a prophet, but not from him. The prophet knew when he saw his son is drowning, he very politely said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi innabni min ahli. وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقِّ My Lord, my son is from me and your promise always comes true because Allah had promised to save his people, his family, his ahl. So he very politely said, he is from me and your promise comes true. So why he is drowning? Why you are not saving him? What did Allah say? Allah said, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَحْلِكَ he is not from you. 
It doesn't mean that he is not biologically from him. He is biologically from him. He is his legitimate son. If you look at his genes and DNA, it shows that he is son of whom? But Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَحْدِكَ إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحٍ He is an embodiment of vicious acts. So, according to the Quran, you can be son of someone and not from him. And you can be not related to someone in a blood relation and be from him. Like the story of Talut and Jalut, when they reached the river, and the leader said to the army, to his soldiers, that you must not drink from this river except a little. فَمَنْ شَرِبَهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي If you listen to me, you are from me. If you don't listen to me and drink too much, then you are not from me. Who is that shahid, that witness, who follows Rasulullah, yet who comes after him, and he is from him? I can refer to two incidents from our Sunni brothers' sources that makes it even clearer. When the verse of Bara was revealed and Rasulullah had to send a message along with this verse to the pagans, first, the first caliph was sent to declare this message to the pagans, to the mushrikeen. After he left, Rasulullah sallallahu received a message from Allah. So sent someone to tell him to return. It is said that when the first caliph returned, he was crying. He said, Hal nazada fi Has Allah sent any verse against me that you have asked me to come back and you want to take away this message, this mission from me? Rasulullah said, Nothing has been revealed against you, but Allah has asked me that I should declare this either myself or a man from me. لا يؤديه إلا أنا أو رجل مني. so he said to him. الله سبحانه وتعالى. so he was a Muslim. he was a companion of the prophet. but he was not considered as a رجل مني. so this means that it has very a specific meaning. Another incident is when a group of Muslims were sent for a battle under the commandership of Amir al Muminin and they won the battle, Imam distributed the booties. Some people were not happy. You cannot always, you know, please everyone. 